Welcome into the Inside Scoop. We are live from Nashville, Tennessee. Today is Wednesday, April 10. Ohio State has the number one recruiting class in America, but we got spring games, lots of important visits, uh, commitments coming, a lot going on. So I called in the big guns for today's show. Let's get to it. We got on three director of recruiting Chad Simmons here. He's got some recruiting intel that we all got to hear. So let's get to it. But first, hit subscribe to the On3 Recruit channel. We talk recruiting here 365 days out of the year, and I'd love for you guys to hit subscribe. I'd appreciate it. All right, let's bring in the great Chad Simmons. We're going to get to the Simmons scoop here in a minute, but a major development just before we went to tape. Elba, Alabama, four-star running back Alvin Henderson put up the do not disturb sign, and he's heading into decision-making mode. Decision should come in about 24 hours. Uh, looking at his RPM, though, Chad, Penn State is now surging over Auburn. What's the latest that you're hearing on this recruitment? Yeah, I'll, I'll kind of stop you right there, Josh. They were surging over Auburn with Steve Wolfong and I dropped our crystal balls, our predictions on three RPMs, you know, in their on Tuesday. I have to kind of remind myself what day it is, what right. minute it is, because <laughs> this one's extremely fluid. You know, since he made up the Penn State this past weekend, spent the weekend up there in Happy Valley, he left feeling very good about Penn State. Now, Leading up to that visit, you know, he's an in-state kid for Auburn. He's been Hugh Freeze's number one running back target since he took the head coaching job on the Plains. The communication's been super strong with Auburn throughout the process. We've looked at schools like Florida State and Miami as their biggest competition. Now, in the final hours, is coming down to Auburn versus Penn State. Does he stay home? Does he go 14 hours away? He has connections up there with Dakari Nelson, Trey Wallace from Alabama at Penn State. He knows everybody, you know, over at Auburn. Um, this one's very fluid. He has he had conversations with Cider uh, at Penn State on Tuesday, who had the same on Wednesday. Uh, obviously, Derek Nix at Auburn. Hugh Freeze is very much involved. They had a deep conversation last night, I'm told, uh, over around an hour long with Hugh Freeze and Alvin Henderson. Uh, this one, depending on when you ask me, Josh, is trending towards Penn State, towards Auburn. I can say with confidence, a final decision has not been made by Alvin Henderson. All right. That's one to keep an eye on. Uh, let's get into the Simmons scoop now. Defensive lineman Elijah Griffin, the number one defensive lineman in America. We haven't talked about him on this channel since his visit to USC a couple weeks ago. Uh, later this month, he'll be at Colorado and Oregon. Are you still feeling that Georgia is the team to beat for the number one defensive lineman in America? You know, I am, Josh. I think there's more teams up there, I yeah. think, on his list being considered. I think those first visits to USC opened his eyes down to Miami as well. Uh, I think Colorado and Oregon, you know, hope to do the same and just kind of put themselves in position. You know, as of right now, Elijah still plans to take this process into the season, yeah. make a decision late. So teams just want to have their foot in the door uh, and be in communication with a guy like Elijah Griffin. But I still think it starts with – the University of Georgia, the in-state school. He's visited more than 10 times. He had his family up there, including his grandmother. He's a very close uh, kid to his family, not just mom, but the grandmother, people around him. And I think that in the end is going to help Georgia win out in this race, but they're going to have to hold off some fierce competition. All right. Now, DJ Pickett, the number seven overall prospect, he's making two big visits later this month. He'll be back at LSU and he'll be back at Oregon. Uh, he also mentioned that he's planning a fall decision, no longer going to make a decision this summer. Right now, LSU seems to me like the team to beat. But who do you watch for if this recruitment does go another six, seven months? Well, I think you have to watch Miami. We know, obviously, his his cousin Booker just signed there. His uncle played there. He's been there numerous times. They want to keep that name, that talent at home down on South Beach. You know, I think Miami's the one you have to watch. But do not sleep on Oregon just because they're all the way across the country. Lanning's doing a great job. Rashad Radu, the new DB coach, very much involved. Numerous staffers in Eugene. If he keeps going back to Eugene – He's not taking visits just to take visits. DJ's not wired that way. He's not doing these trips just to have fun and see different places. He's going because he has interest in that school. I think, obviously, like you said, Josh, LSU is trending, I think, continues to set the pace because of Corey Crawford, that staff, the people in Baton Rouge. But I think Miami and Oregon are still very much in this race as well. 
All right, speaking of Miami, we're going to hit on linebacker Zayden Walker, the five-star from Ellaville, Georgia. Is Are the Canes emerging as the team to beat here? You know, I still like George. He just came off this visit to Miami. He took his grandparents down there with him for the first yeah. time. His mom was with him as well. Uh, he had a very good visit, I'm told, to Miami again. He likes Derek Nicholson. He likes the – that the culture that Crystal Ball is creating, how he's trying to bring that program back. Uh, he set in on meetings. Uh, he, he liked the tempo of practice, you know, at Miami. But I still like where George is at. He talks pretty much every day with Glenn Schumann, the linebackers coach. And what George has done with linebackers, with N'Kobe Dean, Roquan Smith, uh, Quayshawn Walker. I mean, I, I think you have to look at the track record Georgia has. And that's what they're selling to Zayden Walker. I think, it, again, I like a, a lot like Elijah Griffin. It starts with the in-state school with Georgia. Miami's there. He'll be at South Carolina this weekend. But I think Georgia still is the team to beat. All right. Now moving on to Marcus Harris. He's a top 20 wide receiver in this 2025 class. He's at modern day, and he has over 30 offers. But, Chad, you're reporting that there are two teams trending right now. Yeah, I like where Oregon and Texas are at, I think, right now. I mean, we've seen those kids in modern day. They're not scared to go anywhere in the country. Yeah, they're in Southern California, in USC, and UCLA's backyard. You'd think those kids would look at Lincoln Riley's program uh, and, and take a hard look there, but those guys go to Alabama. They go to Georgia. They yeah. go to Texas. They go to Oregon. They'll go anywhere in America, and I think that's right now trending away from USC. Now, I'll say this first. Marcus Harris will be back at USC this month for a visit could they get back in this race of course but right now i like where he's been the most that's oregon and texas he likes junior adams up at oregon how they throw the ball how they play fast and i think he likes the production at wide receiver at texas and their receivers coach chris jackson is actually from modern day so there's some connections there at both schools and right now i think he's trending towards the ducks and the longhorns all right good stuff safety eric winners the Top 100 prospect, the number nine safety in the country. He's from Enterprise, Alabama. Seems like Miami, Auburn, Georgia, all in the mix here. Uh, is there a team out front? Because he's looking to make this decision at the end of the month. Yeah, I think he wants to commit as soon as possible. If he goes the right place, he has the right feeling, he could really pop at any time. I mean, he does not want to take it to official visits he wants to focus on his senior season the all-season training you know he was at auburn uh this past weekend miami the weekend before that he'll be at georgia this weekend then back at miami next weekend i, I think you know after that visit I, I think eric comes home if he hasn't committed by then and, and really tries to figure this out does he stay home with auburn does he go neighboring state to georgia or down south to miami uh this has been auburn and Georgia battling for a few months. Miami got him on campus for the first time a week and a half ago. Things went extremely well, so well, he'll go back in a week and a half again for a second trip to Miami. I do think Miami's still on the outside looking in. We're talking the top two with Auburn. He was there. Charles Kelly, Hugh Freeze, that staff made him feel like a priority. Does Georgia do the same this weekend? That's what I'm watching this weekend in Athens. Right now, I think Auburn is trending for Eric, but Georgia's right there. Don't count out Miami just yet. Mm. All right. A lot of great info on the Simmons School. More like the Simmons Sprint. We covered a lot of info. Really great pace there, Chad. Appreciate you dropping by the inside scoop today. Anytime. Thanks, Josh. Texas held a scrimmage last weekend that brought the stars out. We got a lot of Texas recruiting to cover, and Justin Wells of Inside Texas is here to deliver the juice today. But before we get going, Texas fans, do me a favor. Lock in. Hit subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. All right. Let's bring in Justin Wells from Inside Texas. We'll start with some of these elite wide receivers on campus, and the action is, whew, it's here with DeCorian Moore. You guys put in a flip pick for DeCorian Moore over the weekend. He was visiting. Uh, how optimistic are you about this development of Moore potentially flipping to Texas? And when could we expect some action? Yeah, we're pretty optimistic. Um, and to tell you the truth, we've been optimistic for a while. Um, you know, when you recruit, when you commit early in your junior year, that team becomes the target. So instead of recruiting the kid, a lot of times I think schools, you know, fall in the trap of recruiting against the school, recruiting against LSU. And that's tough in this cycle. Bryce Underwood, Harlem Berry, DeCorian Moore, they, they, they've been incredible. But with DeCorian, I think there's a sense of staying closer to home is going, going to be the, the way to go. Um, 
I don't think anything's imminent. I, I feel like he's solid at LSU. I feel like he could see yeah. himself playing at LSU if he needed to. And as you and I have discussed before, the season's got to play out a lot of times to, to see what happens in November and December in that early signing period. But for more in Texas, it just makes too much sense. He's been there too many times. He's gotten he's, – he's become so much closer with Steve Sarkeesian and Chris Jackson. His mother, his family has become close to this staff. He's supposed to return for the spring game if he can get out – if he can – uh, finish up his regional track meet that morning. That's going to be iffy. He'll be back in Austin late, likely late, uh, late J- June for his official visit. He's going to be at Ohio State this yeah. weekend. Uh, Steve Wiltfong posted that yesterday. He's going to be there. Ohio State, Oregon, Texas, LSU, those are really the four schools that have, have kind of maintained that consistency with him. But, again, he'll tell you. He's, he's solid to LSU, but if you talk to people behind the scenes, you talk to people close to him, and don't forget there's a contingent – of Duncanville Panthers in Austin right now. Sure. And one of the biggest recruiters of this bunch is Colin Simmons. And the fact that he can go watch a scrimmage and watch his former teammate making an impact as a true early enrollee freshman speaks volumes for Sark and the culture in this program. Yeah, it, it's got to have an impact. Some of that peer-to-peer recruiting, we always see that effective on the trail. Now, we'll see what happens yeah. with his commitment to LSU. More visits ahead, and I don't think this one's coming down to any final decisions anytime soon. Now, there's another in-state five-star wide receiver, Kalik Lockett, on campus. Uh, are you feeling more optimistic right now about DeCorian Moore, who's committed to another program, or Kalik Lockett, who remains uncommitted at this time? Uh, I, I, I feel... Very good that Texas is going to get to and Moore. Uh, with Kalik Lockett, I, I think it's going to come down to numbers mm-hmm. because there are so many good receivers in this cycle. And I think Texas only wants to take three, maybe four. If they can push the number to four, I feel like Coach Jackson probably will. Um, I think because they just took three last cycle. But that, that's the thing with Kalik Lockett is that I think Texas, it's going to be Texas versus the field. I think the Horns – have really established themselves as the school. Kalik has been attending, you know, recruiting events in Austin since he was a freshman. And I actually talked to him and his father on Saturday afternoon about it. And and just the fact that he went from a freshman with no stars and no offers to a five-star and a priority for the Texas staff, it really is a fun story to follow and and unique. Kalik is such a special kid, such a special talent. He's going to be, I believe, LSU this weekend. For the spring game, he's still got you know Michigan in the mix. USC yeah. is pushing for an official visit. A and M is still giving him a hard sell. But I think right now, especially after this weekend, it's probably Texas and versus the field. I think he wants an August decision. A lot of these guys want to get their spot before their senior season starts, and so I feel like Khalid's probably going to make that call in late summer. But right now, I like Texas, and if, if he comes on this official visit and, and gets the same vibes, I think it's Texas versus the field for Khalid. Okay. Uh, four-star wide receiver Jamie French said after his visit, quote, Texas is no doubt in my top three now. They weren't before I came. Definitely top three now for sure. Ohio State and Tennessee are the other two. Now, Jamie French said this coming out of his Tennessee visit about the Vols. Now it looks like he's booted all the Florida schools out of his top three. Are you buying the hype of Jamie French in Texas right now? I'm buying a little bit of it. Listen, Jamie French is delightful. He is an he is a joy to, talk, to speak with and, and catch up with. You talk, he makes our job fun, Josh. Mm-hmm. He is a really interesting kid. He wanted to see what Austin was all about because Sark and Coach Jackson have been really pushing. The staff has been really pushing to get him on campus. They blew him away. And he said, ultimately, he said this three or four times, it's the people. There's a culture in Austin that's addictive right now. And and, and Jamie French felt it. Now, he's going to take an official visit to Texas. He's going to take an official to, to Tennessee. I believe he's also going to try to see Miami as well. But I think Ohio State is still the team to, mm-hmm. to look out for here. But I'll tell you this, Texas is 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 more in the mix now than they were 48 hours ago. Yeah. I 72 agree. hours ago, rather. Uh, I think Jamie French is taking is going to take his time. He's going to go through it and try to figure out what's best. Former Alabama commit. Don't forget KJ Lacey was on campus. That's a friend of his from Sarah Land in, in Alabama in Texas Pledge. And so there's a little bit of connecting there. I think that they had the, the receivers kind of had a good little inner inner battle 
who's better, Texas high school football wide receivers or Florida high school wide receivers. French enjoyed doing that. The biggest takeaway for me was they got him on campus. They blew him away. They're going to get him back in June. And then I think we'll start to see what this recruitment looks like probably in July. But they're they're in the mix. I think Ohio State still has a hair of a lead. I think they still kind of have a little bit longer of that relationship. They, they've kind of been in it a little bit longer. But if you let Sark and Jackson make up ground here, make up slack, French is a realistic option. And I, I think they absolutely blew away this trip. All right, let's move on to a couple other top targets, not at the wide receiver uh, position that were on campus. We'll start with Jonah Williams, the number one linebacker in America. We talked about him last week, trending heavily to Oklahoma. Do you feel like Texas has made a dent in that lead that Oklahoma's had? Yes, <laughs> and I have an RPM pick to Oklahoma. Right. So we are watching this one closely because – Yes, uh, Jonah Williams in Texas, there, there's something there. I think Oklahoma got the early lead. And we discussed this last week. You know, early in the year when I was on the road, I, I couldn't tell you how many times I was talking to kids and they were mentioning Oklahoma. The Sooners had a, a lot of momentum. They had a good little vibe going. They built up some good rapports with the offensive linemen and DFW. They just looked really good. Add the fact that Jonah Williams is a baseball player and will play baseball at the next level. Uh, Oklahoma checked a lot of boxes. Texas is caught up. That Not only did Jonah get to watch the scrimmage, he got to go over and hang out in the baseball facilities and talk to David Pierce before their game with BYU on Saturday. If you want to get in the Jonah Williams sweepstakes, you better recruit baseball. You better build up the diamond because, you know, his older brother Nick was a baseball prospect for the Philadelphia Phillies and Texas Rangers. Uh, if you've watched him, he is a tremendous left-hander, center fielder, uh, pitcher, He's tremendous, but he's also one of the best athletes in the country. He can play safety. He can play linebacker. Hell, he can play receiver. He's that talented. Texas made a dent. They, 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 they made an impression on him. And so where that goes from here remains to be seen. I think this recruitment is just now starting to kind of open up. Again, I have an RPM for Oklahoma. I, feel a little, I, I don't feel as confident about it now as I, as I did yeah. last week. But, but Texas is chipping away at this. Blake Gideon and these guys have made him a priority. And whether or not he picks Texas remains to be seen. But, mm -hmm. yeah, Oklahoma had the lead, and Oklahoma, and Texas is definitely c coming for him. Okay. Well, how about Michael Fasusi from Louisville, Texas, number five offensive tackle in America. And he recently was in Athens, and there's some optimism coming from Georgia that they're in a really good spot for Fasusi. Are the dogs a real threat to Texas? Yes, I think the dogs are a real threat to anybody. <laughs> if if George, Georgia has some stroke on this recruiting trail, mm -hmm. Kirby Smart has some some skins on the wall. That this is a this is one of the power programs. Kirby might be the power coach right now with with Saban and Harbaugh gone. And so, Fasusi understand about Fasusi. He he really enjoys the recruiting process, For and sure. he doesn't let it get to his head. He is such a fantastic kid with a fantastic family. I was able to catch up with him yesterday. Uh, he was on campus at Texas on Tuesday. He took a one day unofficial, loved it. Got to watch, got to watch practice, got to sit in on meetings with Kyle Flood, got to do a lot of one on one with Flood and with Coach Sark. He brought his father, Ebenezer. They were able to connect as well. He's going to be coming back uh, late June for his official visit. Um, it, early on, it was Texas, Oklahoma, and Texas AM, I feel right. like, for, for Susie. Missouri got a, got a visit, blew him away. Georgia got a visit, blew him away. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think really right now we're kind of we're, we're kind of going to the mean. I think with the, the fact that he loves the process, I think he's going to continue to take these visits. I think he's going to continue to to look at schools and make sure he makes the right decision. That being said, I still think it's a Texas OU battle. Mm -hmm. I still think with his relationship with Kyle Flood and Bill Biedenbaugh at Oklahoma, he absolutely loves those two guys. And the fact that he's such a family man, kid, he's so close to his family, he's got the opportunity to stay close if he needs to. And so OU, Austin, within proximity of Louisville High School. But Georgia, if Georgia starts pushing, this thing might take another turn. Yeah. It, Missouri made a big impression. Texas A&M is a sleeper, I think, in this recruitment. And so at the end of the day, we, we posted it inside Texas.com. He absolutely loved the trip. He loved watching Kelvin Banks, the starting left tackle. He can envision himself 
as that left tackle when Banks is gone. He's going to enroll early. He, he, they run similar schemes at Louisville that they do at Texas, so he feels like the transition would be easy. I, I really like the horns here, but the more you mention Georgia, the more you mention even Oklahoma and A&M, this recruitment's still got a ways to go. Yeah, starting to heat up. It'll be important to see who he visits later this spring and then into the summer. Does he make it back to Georgia? Does he make it back to Missouri? Those visits will be telling. Uh, speaking of visits, Jordan Davison, he's a, he, he's been trending everywhere but Texas, but he was on campus <laughs> last weekend. Uh, he's from Modern Day High School out there in California. Can Texas reel him back in? How are they sitting with Jordan Davison after this recent visit? I think they can. I got to catch up with him Saturday evening after the, after the, the, the visit. And, you know, the message from Texas remains the same. You're our number one back. You're number one on the big board. And Davison loves that. He has mm -hmm. gotten so close to, to Shard Choice over the last year. Uh, Texas is going to be in this recruitment no matter what happens. That being said, Ohio State has some momentum. And with, with, with Coach Lachlan headed, headed to Columbus, I felt like that gave them another box. Right. With And, and I'll say this. I, if Ohio State wins out, I'm going to say it's because of the depth chart. Because Texas has a big room of running backs. Like, Choice has gotten two backs the last three cycles, it feels like. And so they are, they're stockpiling that running back room. Whereas, if you look at Ohio State, they're, they're going to be missing two of their guys after this season in Judkins and, and Trayvon Henderson. And so sure. I think Ohio State has an advantage with that depth chart. Because Jordan's paying attention to that. He's, he, he, he's just like any other highly recruited kid. He's looking at numbers. And Ohio State's bench is a little bit more enticing than Texas is right now. That's not going to be the end-all decision. He'll be back for his official visit in June. Texas is going to be in it. Michigan's going to be in it. Alabama's going to have a say. But right now, I think it's going to come down to Texas and Ohio State. I feel like Ohio State still looks pretty solid. But Texas did what they needed to do with Davidson when he got him back. You know, can just remind him how important he is, how much of a priority, you know, stay on him. But at the end of the day, it, if it comes down to, to data points, I think the depth chart at Ohio State is, is a little better looking than Texas right now. Fair. All right. The last prospect I want to hit on is probably the one prospect that was on campus over the weekend when it was heading in that I had on commit watch is Zion Williams. He's a priority defensive line tackle, uh, defensive lineman, and he had a great time at Texas. Now, I don't know if this would have resulted in me having a great day, but here's how I know Zion Williams had a great day. This is what he said, quote, okay, here's what I've had today for breakfast, five of those chicken sandwiches, then an entire bag of crawfish, two burgers, some chicken tenders, side of tacos, two things of cookies and ice cream, and got some more snacks for the road. So Zion Williams clearly loved his visit to Texas, uh, brought the family with them. Uh, was I wrong for maybe thinking he could potentially commit over the weekend? And how did things go? I would never tell you you're wrong, Josh. Uh, <laughs> but it, it is a little early for Zion. He's, he's going to take his visits, I feel like, into the summer before he makes that decision. Look, LSU had pulled rank. Bo Davis had built this foundation in Austin. That's why he loved Texas so much early in his recruitment. He takes that momentum to LSU, and it carries over. Mm -hmm. And then he goes to Baton Rouge twice in the last two months and loves it. So Texas had some catching up to do, but it was really the Kenny Baker show. Because if Zion is a relationship-centered type kid, one of the nicest, most genuine kids I've ever covered in this job, uh, down in the piney woods of Lufkin, him and, and that, that coaching staff at Lufkin do such an amazing job with their kids year in and year out. Zion's just the next one, 6'5", 3'15", 3'20", unbelievable. Posted a picture of him and Tavondre Sweat after practice. Yeah. He's, he, he, he's looking down at Tavondre Sweat. <laughs> just to give you an idea, that's a 17-year-old, Josh. Um, Texas pulled, pulled back in. Like, this is this is a Texas LSU battle right now. Now, look, there are going to be other schools in the mix. Texas A&M is going to get an official visit in June. TCU is going to get an official visit in June. And don't forget, or late May, rather. Don't forget, their defensive line coach, Jamarcus McFarlane, is from Lufkin, is actually related to Zion. So he's got a connection there. But you said it. After just – I talked to him for probably – I interviewed him for probably 10 minutes, and then I talked to him for another 20 minutes after the interview – and you could just he was just elated like every he wanted some questions he had some questions answered 
He really wants to know who's going to coach him up. And Kenny Baker absolutely killed this recruitment. Mm. He brought him in. He did. He said all the right things. He connected on. He connected with him on a personal level, on a professional level. Um, and I, again, that's going to be how Zion makes his decision. It's going to be relationship based. That's what's going to make they're going to be the final call for him. Um, I, I think this is a, an LSU and Texas battle. I think Texas pulled even with LSU. I think they had some slack to make up with it, and they did that. Um, he'll be back uh, again. Like I said, um, he'll be back. I think he's, he's going to try to come back for the spring game on April 20th. That, that's we're, we're not sure if that's going to happen for sure. He'll definitely be back in June for his official visit. I'm curious when he takes his LSU official because he hasn't scheduled it yet. To me, that's going to be an indicator of kind of where where this recruitment is going because Texas definitely got the momentum back. If there was one player that had a better time that they made a bigger impression on, it was the, it was the four star Zion Williams. I mean, this kid is incredible, and Texas did a fanatic just a fantastic job. And I got to tell you the truth: when he went through that menu, I, I was just in awe. I and, and the fact that he had his pocket stuffed with snacks yeah. for the road. Like I, I was just blown away, but his family loved it. His little brother loved it. And with, with Zion, he's family oriented. You connect with that group, you, you do well. And so I, I think if, of all the prospects this last weekend, Texas hit a home run with Zion Williams. Yeah. He saw the menu and said, I'll just have that. Zion Williams <laughs> is clearly built different. Uh, <laughs> all right. So that, that all this Intel just came from a scrimmage weekend. There's more big visits to come in Austin inside. Texas does a phenomenal job of covering all things football and recruiting. Go check them out right now. Justin Wells from inside Texas. Appreciate you dropping by the inside scoop today. Appreciate you, Josh. Matt rule only has three commitments toward the corn Huskers 2025 class. But recruiting is about to heat up. Visits, they're taking place nearly every day in Lincoln throughout the spring. We got Husker Online insider Sean Callahan. He's going to take us behind the scenes of Nebraska's most important spring targets. But first, Nebraska fans, lock in, hit subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. We love talking Nebraska recruiting, so go ahead, hit subscribe. All right. Let's bring on the great Sean Callahan of Husker Online. So, Sean, before we get into these most important targets for Nebraska, what has been Matt Rule's approach to recruiting this spring? Well, they've had a later start to spring here, Josh. Um, you know, they're going to play their spring game on April 27th. Um, so they didn't really go crazy in March at all. They didn't want to bring recruits in with nothing going on. Um, and so they, they've kind of put all their chips into April. Um, so every single day, a Tuesday, Thursday, or even a Saturday practice, um, we've seen anywhere from three to 10 or more recruits at practice. So they're getting a lot of these guys to come in. Uh, like this week, Adonis Curry was here, um, one of the top players in California. And, you know, he's coming back again. I think that's the key to get a guy from California to Nebraska. You've got to get him here multiple times. Um, so you're seeing some of these guys come in on the front end for a visit, and then they're going to come back again for an official, um, and then ideally maybe again in June. And I think that's the formula they want is if we can get these guys here two or three times, that's going to give them their best chance uh, to be Huskers. Yep, there's definitely a formula to that for those out-of-state guys. you got to get a couple points of contact throughout the spring, then into the summer or fall. You know the deal. You've been following this for a while. All right. Let's talk Nebraska's most important targets as we hit spring recruiting. Uh, we'll start at the top of this list with arguably the most important guy here, TJ Latif, four-star quarterback. Now, he's trending towards Nebraska on the recruiting prediction machine, but Colorado visit over the weekend. What are you hearing now on TJ Latif and where Nebraska stands? Well, he's really been their primary quarterback target for quite some time. Mm -hmm. You know, early on, it was Alex Mansky from Algona, Iowa, the number one player in Iowa. He's going to Iowa State now. And I think Dil Raiola and Daniel Kalen coming here had some, some effect on his movement because they were in with Mansky. Uh, but Latif then quickly became their primary target. Uh, they have him coming in for his official visit for the spring game. So they'll get a semi home um, day game day weekend to bring him in um, where, you know, there's going to be Josh over 70,000 fans at that spring game. So they'll have a great stage, ideally, hopefully great weather um, to kind of showcase the program to TJ Latif. Hmm. All right. So we'll see what happens with TJ Latif, but he is one of the most coveted quarterbacks in the, in this class right now, because 
He's ranked number 24, but amongst the top 25 quarterbacks, only six remain uncommitted. So they are coming off the board at a really high pace. Uh, the next prospect we're going to talk about is athlete Michael Terry. He's out of San Antonio, Texas. He's our number one athlete, borderline five-star recruit, number 23 overall in the entire country in Texas with a slight lead over Nebraska on the recruiting prediction machine. But where do you feel uh, Nebraska stands right now and what do they need to do with Michael Terry? Well, they've got them scheduled to come in for an official visit as well. So they, they've done all the things they need to do at this point. Um, but yeah, he's definitely one of their top targets. You know, Matt Rule and his staff have a really good Texas connection. Uh, you've got Garrett McGuire, Joey McGuire's son is the receivers coach. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, their newest quarterbacks coach, Glenn Thomas, also a former Texas high school football coach. So, They've got a lot of inroads in that state. Um, they've had success all over Texas. Matt Rule going back to his Baylor days. Um, and he's no doubt probably the top target right now that they're in on in the state of Texas. All right. Now let's move on to tight end Chase Lofton. He is the lone in-state prospect in our video today. He's out of Omaha, Nebraska, six foot six and a half, 213 pounds, a major mismatch in uh, and right now, looking at his RPM, trending Nebraska, but it's close. You got Kansas State in there and also the Oklahoma Sooners. Uh, what are you hearing about Chase Lofton? And is this one that Nebraska could lock down maybe before summer? Yeah, I, th I think, you know, he was on campus for practice this past Saturday. And he hung out with Carter Nelson, the 2024 um, top 100 recruit, was with him all day. Um, you know, so I, I think they had a really good weekend with him when he visited down here on Saturday. Uh, Chase Lofton, though, has as many offers as you're going to see. Um, yeah. He plays a premium position tight end, um, and teams have gone to the Midwest to find these tight ends. I mean, that's kind of been the trend, especially with the way Iowa has put out all these tight ends in recent years. Uh, this part of the country uh, puts out a lot of tight ends. I mean, you put it in perspective, last year, Nebraska had more tight ends in this state of less than 2 million people signed with power five schools than the state of California. And Chase Lofton is another one of those players. Um, he is going to take a swing down to Florida. He had Florida State, Miami, and Florida as well. Um, mm -hmm. So he's looking at those schools. His brother, Braden, plays at Kansas State. So they're kind of a wild card. Uh, Texas A&M as well is a team to keep close tabs on. Uh, they've got a couple of Midwest connections there that have done a really good job uh, with Colin Klein and then now Christian Ellsworth um, from this part of the country that have recruited him down to A&M. So very wide open, but I think Nebraska, yeah. um, at least to this point, is very much in the in the battle for Chase Lofton. Would be a huge win. All right, let's move on to running back uh, Jamari and Parker. He's out of St. Louis, Missouri, and he's a one-time Arkansas commit, now trending heavily to Nebraska. Uh, how much of a priority is he? Oh, um, you know, he's definitely a priority that they have one running back committed, Connor Booth, an in-state player, but they definitely would like to get uh, Parker as well. Uh, he was at practice this past Tuesday, spent the day in Lincoln uh, with his family and, um, you know, kind of leading the charge as a uh, behind the scenes person for Nebraska. Keith Williams, um, you know, is one of their player personnel uh, directors. He's a former NFL football player from St. Louis. So, um, recruiting St. Louis, and we've learned this at Nebraska over the years, it's it's challenging. You have to have somebody that's trusted, that has the connections down there. Um, and Nebraska's got Keith Williams kind of behind the scenes helping them. Um, you know, and Parker is no doubt a, a top running back prospect. I just saw Minnesota re-offered him this past week. Um, it will be interesting to see now what other spring visits that he plans to take here moving forward. Mm. All right, let's wrap this up with one of the with the highest needs in this class's offensive line. So we might as well go with Malachi Goodman, six foot six and a half, three hundred and fifteen pounds from Paramus, New Jersey, and he's been taking visits, been kind of all over the place. But he was in Lincoln recently. What are you hearing coming out of this one? Yeah, Malachi Goodman's now been here twice out of Paramus Catholic, and um, he brought his mom both times. You know, the key thing is Nebraska made his very first scholarship offer in high school. Um, so he's got a lot of loyalty for to Nebraska for that. Sure. You look at his offer list now, he can go anywhere he wants. He's been to Alabama, Ohio State, USC, um, you know, you name it, Michigan, Penn State. He's got just about every offer you can imagine 
Um, you know, and some services have him as a top 100. Um, I know we still have him as a high three and on three, but I, I think when you look at his offer list, you'll be hard pressed to find very many offensive linemen that are being recruited as heavily as he is right now. He's taking nine visits over a six week period this spring to all of those blue blood programs and more. Um, I think now the key Nebraska hopes to get him back in late June for an official. I think the, the prospects look good for that. So if they can get Goodman in Lincoln for a third visit, that would go a really long way. Dylan Raiola has helped recruit with him as well as a number of the other younger high profile players in this Husker program. All right. Well, like you said, hey, it's springtime in Nebraska and they are getting big time recruits on campus nearly every single day. Guys, go check out Husker Online. They got you covered, whether it's football, whether it's recruiting. You guys do a great job. Sean Callahan, thank you for dropping by the Inside Scoop today. Anytime. Thanks, Josh. Thank you for watching this video. And if you enjoyed that, go check out the hundreds of videos that we have on this channel. And also, do me a favor. Hit subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel.